Another circle theorem here, this time we're proving the tangent to a circle radius theorem. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now I kick off with a circle and then I'm going to draw a radius in the circle. So from here to here. And then I'm going to draw a tangent to the circle. A tangent is just a line that just touches the circle as it passes by. So where's my tangent tool? There it is. Now to the tangent to the circle on this point. All right, so it's a tangent that touches where the radius line touches. Now, if I measure the angle between the radius and the tangent, what do you think that angle looks like it would be? Let's try it out. All right, let's measure that angle from there to there. It's a right angle. You can see there's a right angle there. Now, it doesn't matter. We can change the size of our circle. We can sort of rotate it around. And you can see that that angle is staying at 90 degrees. It doesn't matter where that tangent is. So that is what the theorem is that we'll be looking at. Very careful here. We know there's a radius. We know that there's a tangent that yeah, meets at that point. So the radius and we know that the uh, tangent are meeting. But what we need to prove is that there is a right angle there. We don't know there's a right angle. We think there might be. And we're going to use a really clever idea called proof by contradiction. Uh, but before I get into proof by contradiction, we just need to recap something that you probably know, uh, but you may not have ever thought about before. Side note is this, a triangle's angles and corresponding side lengths ratios correspond. All right, that's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, when you see it, you'll get it. This is a triangle. Now, I need you to look at the angles for a second. This angle is 95.82. That's a large angle. This one's 51.82. And this one's the smallest angle. All right, so I can say that the angle at C is larger than the angle at B, and that is larger than the angle at A. Now, let's look at the sides. Now, when I talk about corresponding sides, this corresponding side is the one opposite it. Okay, and you can see that the length of that is 11.78. That's a long length. Uh, now, this one, 51.82, the corresponding angle uh, side is this one opposite it. If we draw a line from there, we march across the room, 9.31. That's big, but not as big as 11.78. Now, this was the smallest angle in the triangle. And um, if we look at its corresponding side, the one that's opposite it, we get 6.34, which is the smallest length in the triangle. Now, it doesn't matter what we do to our triangle. We can move it around however we want to and make angles larger and smaller. And it doesn't matter how we do that. This, this time is the largest angle, 112.21. This will be the largest side because it's opposite. This is 46.56. That's the second biggest angle, the middle angle. This is 9.72, which is the middle length side. And this is 21.23. And opposite the smallest angle, which is what I'm looking at right now, is the smallest side. And this is something you probably knew about triangles, but maybe hadn't thought about before. In brief, if we have a triangle with angles A, B, and C, where angle A is larger than angle B, which is larger than angle C, A is greater than B is greater than C, then the corresponding sides, A, B, and C, A will be larger than B, which will be larger than C. And we're going to use that somewhere in this proof. I know it doesn't look obvious straight away, uh, but now we're going to get stuck into it. Now, we're going to use something called proof by contradiction, which is really, really clever. The idea is that if you're trying to prove this, assume it's untrue. Assume the opposite is true and then start working through that. And if the whole thing falls apart, then it means that the original idea must be true. If um, we're proving this by contradiction, we need to come up with a statement that's not this. Uh, the tangent to a circle is perpendicular. So it's saying that's a right angle. Well, let's say that's not a right angle. Now, if I say that that's not a right angle, there must be some other line that I can draw from point O to this line to make a right angle. So let's draw a, a random line uh, from here to there. Uh, let's draw a point in there. I'm gonna draw a random line in from there and we're gonna say that that makes a right angle. I'm gonna label things, I know that looks ridiculous, but stick with me. Now I'm gonna label this up to call this the origin. I'm gonna call this point A 
and I'm going to call this point X. And I'm also just going to throw in another point here, point P. All right, now here's the crazy assumption that I'm going to make uh, that's opposite to this, right? So I'm going to say that angle O X P is 90 degrees. All right, that's pretty wild, right? Because I'm saying that this is 90 degrees. Now, obviously, just by eyeballing it, it doesn't look like it is, but maybe there's one like much, much closer. We're expanding on this. Right, so we haven't proven anything just by eyeballing it. We've got to go further than that. So let's look at this triangle OAX. Now, the internal angles of a triangle are 180 degrees, right? Now, if this is 90, this can't be 90 because if that was 90 and that was 90 then these two angles would add up to 180 which would mean that this angle was zero which would mean that they were the same line right so this can't be more than 90 and it can't be exactly 90 it has to be less than 90 so i can say that angle oax is less than 90 degrees and the reason for that is just the internal angles of a triangle. Okay, now, what else can I say? Well, I know this, I know this. Now I can use this new piece of information to sort of come into this. Because if angle OXP is equal to 90 and angle OAX is less than 90, then that means that um, the corresponding line from X to there, so that means that line OA must be the largest line in this triangle because this is the largest angle, so that must be the largest line using this thing here, which means that line OA must be larger than some other line, say OX. And the reason for that is what we just talked about over here. So I'll create my little coded reason. Some little arrows there showing that the angles correspond with the sides. Now I'm just going to label up another little point here because this point's probably useful. And now I can say with that new point, I can say that OA is greater than OB plus BX. Um, and now there's no reason for that. We can just see that OX is equal to OB plus BX, right? Um, now we can say that OA is equal to OB because they're both radii. So now we end up in a situation where we can say that OB is or OA is greater than OB plus BX. Now if I substitute OA for OB because we know that OA equals OB, I can now say, I can now subtract OA from both sides and say that zero is greater than BX. Zero is greater than BX. This length here has length less than zero. That doesn't make sense. BX is a length, is length, and it can't be less than zero can't be negative. This is our contradiction. The fact that we've worked from here, assuming that angle OXP was equal to 90 degrees, and then get to here and get like a, a crazy idea that a length of BX uh, is less than zero or zero is greater than BX, that means that that's our big contradiction that we can write in big letters. Contradiction. And that's actually our proof. That's done. That's finished now. Therefore, it's not angle OXP that's 90 degrees. It's angle OAX.
that's 90 degrees because any other point because x was just a random point leads to this contradiction so the only thing we can assume is that it must be this point here okay that is your very first proof by contradiction that's it that angle is 90 degrees